Yeah, hi there. These comments are for AA. And I am Michael Buckoff. The I am the founder, owner, and the materials writer for the online course called the Seven Step System to Pass the TOEFL IBT. And I am also your English 102B instructor for fall quarter 2014. Now, I have some concerns. Now, you have to look at it from my end for a minute. Okay, so let me talk to you for just a second. I scheduled different workshops throughout the quarter so you guys can collaborate and put together your papers. Now, when you turn in your paper, you need to turn in your outline, your, your peer review notes. Uh, you need to turn in all the work that you've done to put this paper together. Now, you just turn in the final draft. That's all I see here. I mean, how do I even know that you wrote this paper? I mean, you could have paid somebody to write this. You could have copied this off the internet. But if you work on the paper in stages in class, and you take notes, and you include those notes as part of your project when you turn it in, then that shows me the whole process. I can see what you did when you started the paper. I can see some of the notes that you took when you are in class. I can see what notes other people gave you when they read the paper. You didn't turn in any of those things. So it, it makes it really problematic for me. I mean, you got to show me that you wrote this paper and by just turning in the final draft and nothing else, that doesn't give me enough evidence that you've actually written this particular paper. Do you see where I'm coming from? You got to think about, uh, you got to think about an English professor here. Uh, we give you assignments and things to do. Um, and, but you, you just didn't comply with all those things. Now the question is, why not? Why didn't you work on the paper over several weeks? Where are your notes? It's just not likely. It's not likely that you can just put together a paper like this without doing outlines, without doing free writing, without doing rough drafts. I mean, it just simply isn't... It's just not very likely. Now, I'll give you a break on this. I mean, I read it, I scored it, but I'm telling you, you need to stop doing this. You need to turn in all of the work that you did to put this paper together because I have to make sure that you have college-level writing skills. And I'm not exactly sure uh, if, if you do. So uh, here, I'm going to put you at 82% on this particular assignment. There are some weaknesses, some things that you can do better, and part of it is with the actual topic that you chose. You say, how well do you think standardized tests measure your abilities? To me, that's pretty focused. Uh, the one thing you could do is, in talking about standardized tests, you might look at one particular test in general. For example, the SAT or the ACT and say, how well does the SAT, the Scholastic Achievement Test, measure students' abilities? Or, what if you looked at the TOEFL exam, and you asked the question, well, how well does the TOEFL exam measure students' academic English abilities? And to me, that would be a little more focused than the topic that you chose. But based on your topic, you say in the thesis, you say, this paper will look at the effectiveness of standardized tests in measuring the abilities of students. You have considering how researchers have taken positions on the issue and then arguing it from my standpoint to refute the existing information on the topic. So when some of the paragraphs are exactly focused around that topic and other paragraphs are not. So let me tell you what I'm talking about. I'm going to go ahead and number the paragraphs right now. So we have we have at least eight, nine. Okay, so we have nine paragraphs. Paragraph two, you say people who wish to hold the status and maintain the system feel is the best method of assessment that can be a you can be used in the admission process. So the admission process for what? For college? So if you're looking at college, again, what particular test 
do you want to look at? And when you, when you bring up this idea of what's called standardized tests, you have to bring up the idea of validity and reliability. So if you want to really answer this question, the question is how reliable and how valid is the SAT that's used to admit students into universities. If you frame your question more like that, that's going to be much more intellectually challenging than the topic that you chose. Uh, another paragraph you say, the topic is open to many stands based on the consideration of different people on whether the system is beneficial or not in establishing the capabilities of students. Pretty broad, that's a pretty broad topic sentence there. I don't think it works very well. Paragraph four you say, you say similarity. Volante notes that the performances in schools are tested based on the performance of students on these tests. Then in that paragraph you get to your opinion. You say, I believe that students have varying learning capabilities. It's probably a little too early to get to your position. It might have been better if you had waited maybe after six paragraphs. You explain really what you have to do here is to get an A on this topic, this is what you have to do. You have to say, okay, how valid and reliable is the ACT test used to admit students in American universities? So there's a group of researchers out there that say that the ACT is not a reliable and valid testing instrument. And they give reasons why. Then you spend a few paragraphs developing those reasons. Then, after that, you'll say, on the other hand, there are other researchers who believe that the ACT test is a reliable and valid instrument to, to admit students or measure students' abilities for admission purposes in U.S. colleges and campuses. Then you explain why they believe the way they do, and that's probably already at page four or five, and then you can get to your argument. But your argument has to really analyze the arguments that were already presented uh, in the paper. Now, did you notice that your paper really is not long enough anyway? Your paper needs to be six full pages, but you're barely five. So the thought that you put into the paper is just not acceptable. It's just not enough for college level type writing. You see what I'm saying? So you, you tried to put this thing together at the very end, but I think had you worked on the paper over several weeks, instead of putting it together at the very end, you probably would have had a better uh, topic. So those are some of my comments uh, on what you've done so far. Now, at this point, you did your group project. Uh, you did not do your second journal. You are passing right now at a 75% barely. You're just barely, barely making it through here. But remember for next quarter, uh, don't make the same mistake. I want to see all of your work on all stages of the writing process. All right? But maybe even next quarter, I'll probably even request, as part of your overall grading assignment, you will need to submit some things along the way before you put it together at the end. Again, I have to make sure that you have written this paper. Now, I'm not saying that you did not, but believe it or not, I do get college students who will try to find other people to write the papers for them. You see what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you did that. But by including a, work, by including a folder with all of your workshop notes, then that tells me that you were participating in the writing process throughout the different weeks of the quarter and not just turning something in at the very end. All right, anyway, thank you very much for completing the assignment and happy holidays.